Well, folks, what a fascinating stock market we have going on right now. A lot of people aren't even seeing what's going on beneath the surface here in the market right now. And um, I can tell you it is uh, getting to very interesting levels now at this point in time. I want to show you a lot of things in today's video. I want to go over a lot of stocks, a lot of things that are going on uh, a little beneath the surface here and um, show you and give, kind of give you some perspective out there on what's going on with specific stocks, specific things in the market and whatnot. Uh, busy video. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being subscribed folks a lot to get into in this one here today okay so where i actually wanted to start today's video is look at what i call those safety stocks okay and you know you look at a trading day like today right procter and gamble down coca-cola mcdonald's travelers johnson and johnson chevron walmart visa jp morgan merck wba cisco apple you know these are all seen as like safety stocks right protection for your money hideout areas and you look at a day like today, a trading day like today, and, and it's all Red Dead Redemption for those particular stocks out there. Then you look a little further and you look at something like Tesla, right? And here we are with Tesla making almost a 5% up move here today. 5% up. That's absolutely incredible, right? And Tesla's been rolling here for a bit. Remember, Tesla entered this year at just over $100 per share. I mean, the stock's climbed, uh, let's call it a mountain, an absolute mountain of worry around it, right? And it's been incredible the way the stock's performing. And you look at a day like today, and, and it's just performing terrific. Look at Meta. Meta keeps running through a new high, a new high, a new high, year-to-date highs, one-year highs. It's incredible, man. I mean, look at this stock. It's up another 1.5% here today, right? I mean, it, the numbers are getting so big on Meta. A 1.5% move is now a 7 thousand dollar up move in the public account for meta right and that's the beauty of when these stocks are really going your you going your way right because the the dollar amounts start to get so substantial off of very small percentage gains right and you look at this stock and it's showing no signs of slowing down and i believe meta's on its way to 300 and it's on its way to 300 sooner rather than later and the reason being is just wait until these next three earnings periods come out oh boy are things about to get fun in regards to that i'm starting to think maybe 350 is realistic uh sooner rather than later rather than just 300 in regards to meta it is absolutely incredible and i don't see the momentum changing anytime soon pal lin tier is on a tear my gosh check this out okay 1.7%. Here's a deal with Palantir stock, okay? And here's the thing you got to understand. Every single dip in the stock will be bought for the next year, the next 12 months. Every single major dip, whether it's a, a few day dip, a week dip, a month dip, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't even know if you'll have a month dip, to be honest, over the next 12 months. But every single dip that happens in the stock will be bought. Every single one and that's exactly what you're seeing playing out here when you got a company that's on a trajectory to get inside the s p 500 <laughs> and you got a company that's you know uh, got a product that's aimed right at what is the most exciting thing in the market and people are just starting to catch on to that right in, in ai when you have all that i can tell you every dip will be bought in palantir for the next 12 months every dip okay and, and you'll see the stock go down a little bit and it's going to get bought up you'll see it go down a little bit and it's going to get bought up and bought up and bought up and bought up and what you're going to see is a new 52 week high a new one year high new 52 week high and it's just going to keep going and rolling and so you know not every single trading day is going to be up for palantir but i can tell you every single major or minor dip in the stock will be bought and um that's just different that's different than obviously what's going on uh, in, in a lot of other stocks in this market obviously at this particular time right you look like a, you look at a stock like Corsair like I own, right? Corsair just blew through $20 a share at this point in time. Now, Corsair could take a breather if Best Buy reports really bad numbers, like really bad numbers, really bad guidance. That could pull Corsair down a little bit here in the short term. But you look at the stock. It's, it's a quiet stock that's climbed over 45% year to date. Over 45 flip and flapjack and percent year to date, right? That's incredible. The, you know the Dow Jones Industrial Average is basically flat on the year? Did you know that? The Dow Jones Industrial Average is basically flat. And meanwhile, we've got stocks out there going up 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100%, right? That's incredible to think about the divergence in the market right now. But a stock like Corsair, remember, this stock started to get hit way back in early 2021. This stock peaked in February of 2021. It started its down cycle far before all these other stocks started their downward cycles, right? And it's been pulling up very nicely. I mean, remember, this stock bottom 
in, uh, it was kind of around late 2022, right? Stock bottomed at just over $10 a share. Check out its 52 week range, just over $10 a share. Today it's 20, right? And it's not like the numbers have necessarily been great for Corsair. It's just, it's getting less and less bad. And it looks like it's going to get better and better as this year ticks on in terms of revenue growth, margin growth, and profitability. And so that's great news for Corsair. Look at Shopify. Shopify looks like it wants a new high. The stock's up 76% year to date, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon, okay? This this baby looks like it wants a new high. You know, I know, uh, from my understanding, Kathy Wood sold out of Shopify. I think, you know, as I said before, I think it was a huge mistake on her part. Huge mistake. Um, you know, this is not a type of stock you want to sell out of, and certainly not over this next 12 to 18 months. And the reason being is in regards to Shopify, they just fundamentally change their business in the biggest way I've seen a company fundamentally change your business bigger. We're talking, this is bigger than meta getting out of those logistics related businesses and cutting the amount of staff they, they, they cut that are all going through right now. The margins and the profitability that you're going to see this company emerge later this year and into 2024 is going to be night and day difference from what you saw over the past year. It's you can't even like put them on the same level. And so when I look at a stock like Shopify, you know, uh, this is a stock I personally own in the Patreon portfolio, right? Which if you want to see all the moves I'm making in my Patreon portfolio, plus be part of that Discord chat, check out the description area down there. There's a link for that to join us in there. But in regards to this, I, like, I don't want to sell Shopify anytime soon. I mean, I love the company for the next five plus years, but also it's a beautiful story for the next five quarters. That reminds me a lot of Palantir in that respect. In terms of Palantir, it, they got a beautiful next five quarters in front of them. They also got a beautiful next five years. And those are the ideal situations in the market. When you can find a story, because it's hard to find stocks many times that the short-term and the long-term line up, right? You might have a stock that has a great long-term future, but it doesn't have a very bright short-term future, right? And you might have a company that has a really good short-term going, for, but they don't have a really good long-term going for it, right? They have a lot of worries about what's going on long-term. In a stock like Shopify and a stock like Palantir, these stocks have incredible short-term and long-term stories that are going on in regards to them, right? Look at a stock like Fubo. Fubo continues to run another 5% plus move here today, right? The one month, this is a one month chart of Fubo. The stock price is up 64 flip and flapjack in percent in one month in regards to Fubo. That's incredible. The momentum does not stop in, in regards to the stock, right? It's just continue to show momentum. And the Google Trends still looking really, really good for Fubo. Still, you know, much of, if you look at the this past month where Google, Google Trends has been at versus a previous year at the same time, they're significantly above. So that means their relevancy is obviously significantly above. And they also just went up on prices. And what they said is they're not seeing any major drop off at all. They're actually seeing a better, better results in terms of uh, people like canceling and things like that. They're not even seeing like, like it's better than last year. They even mentioned on the conference call, right? On top of that, they mentioned their advertising business getting better and better on a month over month over month basis. I mean, you know, you got a lot of things playing out there. It's a high risk, high reward stock, but I can understand why the stock's up 64% in one month. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the stock's up 600% in a, you know, in a year or two. Like, you know, when you're coming off those sorts of levels and you're a $1 stock, you know, especially now that they don't have to raise money, like all the fear is pretty much gone out of Fubo. The, the cash flow is going to get better and better. The profitability is going to get better and better. The margins are going to get better and better. The revenue growth continues to pour and they continue to attract more customers and they don't need to raise any more money, they said now. I mean, the, what's there to be scared of? The, you know, obviously there's always risk with the business model, but I'm just like, they're so well positioned. And their only major, major competitive threat, really, uh, that we've seen is honestly YouTube TV in, in regards to that, right? Foot Locker. Oh my gosh, okay. Look at Foot Locker. On a one month, the stock is now down almost 32%, okay? What is going on here, okay? First off, Foot Locker is usually seen as like kind of like a safety play, right? They, they don't sell high price stuff, really. It's usually a company that's always super, super profitable. They do well in, in many different economic climates, right? Yeah, sure, sometimes they can get hit, but it's not at the end of the world. And yet, I mean, the stock's just getting absolutely wrecked. But here's what I have to say, okay? They deserve it. They deserve it, man. I mean, you know, when with how bad those earnings were and how bad that guidance was, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. This is why I haven't went on this why I didn't buy shares Friday. This is why I didn't buy shares today. I will be a buyer of the stock later in the week. I will be. But 
I'm going to let this uh, settle. I'm going to let the dust settle in regards to this whole situation, okay, after coming off those disastrous earnings. Now, Mary Dillon leads this company. She used to work for Alta. She used to be uh, a VP at McDonald's. She has a lot of great experience. She used to work uh, fairly high up at PepsiCo. And so, you know, you, you look at her track record, and it's pretty darn impressive. And so my full faith is behind Mary Dillon and that she's going to get this ship uh, you know, pointing in the right direction, and we're going to do very well over time in regards to this Foot Locker. But no doubt, in the short term, it's a messy situation, right? Very, very messy situation. And check this out. You know, we're barely clinging on to gains in Foot Locker now, barely up four percent in the dividends only account, right? And this was a stock that just shortly ago we were up fifteen thousand dollars on, right? And so gains can go bye bye quick in regards to a situation like that. Like a company comes in and reports that bad of earnings. Yeah, you're going to lose your gains quickly. Now, obviously, this doesn't account for all the dividends received over time, so I'm sure this gain would probably be in the thousands of dollars if it included the dividends as well, right? But that's how quick it can happen. You have a company report a disaster, and you can go from having really nice gains in a stock to barely clinging on to any gains. So, like I said, they deserve it, man. They deserve the move that happened you know, Friday. They deserve the move that happened today. If the market's bad tomorrow or something, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes one more uh, leg lower, in, in my opinion, in regards to that. Okay. No, something fascinating happened in the stock market today, and everybody's like, what, what, what happened here? Like, wh why did all of a sudden this happen? So the S&P 500 went from 4,200 plus to all of a sudden 4,181 in a matter of minutes. The move happened really quick, and it was a violent move down. I mean, that's not a small move down. In a matter of, that's a matter of minutes, man. It's extreme, right? And so a lot of people are wondering, what happened here? How do you get that level of selling pressure, uh, potentially hundreds of billions of dollars in a matter of minutes? It seemed like there was really no big news. It seemed like there was really no big news at that particular time. And these are things that are, that are, I think, important to understand, right? Because, I mean, you look at a lot of these other moves, and this is kind of natural market activity, right? You know, this is kind of a dramatic move there. That's a little strange as well. Um, but overall, you know, this is kind of normalish market activity, except for this. That, that dramatic, you would have to say, like, did Jay Powell come out and start talking or something like that? No, okay? This looks like it could actually be AI-related. Yes, you heard me right, AI-related. So this is fascinating. Check this out. This is going to blow your mind, okay? So, this says this morning, and I've seen this from a few sources now at this point in time, this, this morning an AI-generated image of a boom-boom at the Pentagon surfaced with multiple news sources reporting it as real, and the S&P 500 fell 30 points in minutes. This resulted in a $500 billion market cap swing on a fake image. It then rebounded once the image was confirmed fake. Uh, this person says AI is becoming dangerous, right? Wow. Wow. I like this comment. This is my favorite comment. This does not constitute the danger of AI. Much as I could have Photoshopped that myself in a few minutes. Thank you. This instead constitutes the dangers of crap reporting. 100%. 100%. Like, people act like Photoshop has been around for like 100 years now, right? Anybody that's good at Photoshop can, can Photoshop images massively better than AI can. And I can tell you it's a night and day difference. Like, somebody that's good at Photoshop can, can, can do such a great job that you are convinced that has to be a real thing. AI is like, maybe, okay? Maybe, at best, in regards to that. And so, you know, that, that's the thing. People are like, oh, this is a danger of AI. It's like, give me a break. Anybody could have Photoshopped that. Literally, anybody could have Photoshopped that. That was not even a good, high-quality, like, Photoshop there, man. I mean, you ask anybody that's good about Photoshop, and, like, was that a good, was that, a, did they go do a good job, AI? <laughs> no. That's a joke. Like, could have done a million times better than that. Like, you had to be kidding me. It's bad reporting. That's the bottom line with that. Thank you for that. I also saw this on Twitter. I thought this was fascinating, right? This person says, hot take. Start a family. Your career will thank you. You'll realize you've been working directionless uh, until then. And, <clears throat> you know, I saw this, and, and it's actually a, a very similar perspective I have in regards to at least the component of a lot of people think that your career is done if you have a family or something like that. Like, you can't make money. You can't have success. You can't do any of that. And they think, like, well, starting a family is, you know, the only way you'll benefit is, like, uh, by, like, you know, it's fun to have kids and, you know, have the next generation and, and those sorts of things and be able to teach people stuff. But actually, what you'll find over time is that 
you're going to more than likely make massively more money with a family than without a family. And I'll, I'll put it to you like this, right? Look at all the most successful people in the world, okay? And what you'll find is all of them have kids. All of them. And many of them have a, a, a lot of kids, okay? That's the bottom line in regards to that. So people think like, oh, you have kids, your life's over, that's it, your career's done. And I'm just like, like almost all these people had kids in their primes of their careers too. That's the other fascinating thing. They help raise their kids in primes of their careers, right? And, um, and so don't ever think like, because I, I see it from some of my peers and whatnot, they're scared to have kids because they're like, oh, my career is going to diminish. I'm not going to be able to make as much money if I have kids. And I'm just like, you're wrong. You are 100% wrong. Uh, you, you can do just fine as it is right in front of your eyes. Every one of the most successful people in the world has kids and actually a lot of kids. Okay. So do keep that in mind. Okay. Now I saw this here today. Southwest states strike a landmark deal with Biden to conserve Colorado river water. This is huge news, obviously for any of us, any of folks that are watching, um, that are in California, Arizona, obviously in my city, Vegas, right? Um, now this is really great news for Vegas because we're the we're the kings and queens of conserving water. So it looks like we're going to get a massive amount of temp of basically federal funding uh, by saving water. Like we're almost basically every single drop of water that is that is used indoors in, in Las Vegas ends up being cleaned and then put back into Lake Mead. I don't think a lot of people realize that. And so we don't waste any water. And even in most of the city, they've taken out any real grass. Uh, because obviously grass uses an immense amount of water, especially in the desert. And so, you know, now they've even limited how big you can, you can do a swimming pool. So we're the best at this. Okay. We are the best at conserving water in Vegas. We only get like 2% allocation here in Vegas and, uh, and we make it work. Okay. And we make it work really dang well. So I'm, I was actually saw that and I was actually kind of excited because this just means a whole lot of money coming to my city. That's, that's what I could tell you about that. Okay. Now, Feds Kaskari says a June pause on rate hikes wouldn't indicate an end to the hiking cycle. Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari on CNBC on Monday cautioned against reading too much into a June pause in the current rate hiking cycle. Which, what that basically tells me is they're 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 pausing, hundred percent. Okay, uh, they're pausing they're they're pausing in June. That's my opinion on that. Okay. If, we're a, if we were able to skip in June, that does not mean we're done with our tightening cycle. It means that we're getting more information. And I can understand his, his standpoint. In, in the Fed, they're in a tough position because they can't say, like, we're done. Like, we're done. But they're done, okay? And no doubt they're going to pause and they're going to look at the data and whatnot. And here's the facts around data, okay? Inflation is literally crashing. Like, if you thought Foot Locker stock has made a big move the past month, okay, check out inflation over the past year. Inflation is literally crashing right in front of our eyes, okay? There's absolutely zero reason for the Federal Reserve to, to raise rates anymore. All the Fed should be considering from here on out is cutting. Cutting, when do we start cutting? Like what, what economic indicators are we going to look at to, to think about cutting? The fact that the conversation is still even on like pause versus hike, those sorts of things is laughable to me. Because when you just look at how bad CPI has been coming down for the past year, it's astronomical. And if you're looking at any sort of forward looking data, it's, uh, you know, and, and listen to companies' earnings calls. Even companies are, are you know, um, I can tell you, you know, not seeing nearly as much inflation in their businesses now at this point in time when you listen to these, these earnings calls, right? And so there's inflation in the system, but there's always inflation in the system. And there's almost never a situation where there's not inflation in the system unless you're going through a catastrophic economic situation like we went through, obviously, in 2009. And so this is what we're seeing play out here, folks. And um, I can tell you, the market smells this. This is why you're seeing a lot of those safety stocks not do much or pull back. Why are all those safety stocks red today? Because the market is understanding that the Fed's going to be cutting sooner rather than later. If you want more data, this gives you everything you want to know. Look at the divergence year to date between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the QQQ. The QQQ is up 27.5% year to date. The Dow is barely up at all. It's up less than a half a percent this year. An epic divergence, right? Now, if you know me, you know I hedged this year S Dow, right? which essentially, I, I was looking for one of the indexes to hedge against, right? And I thought the, the index that would do worse this year, in my opinion, was the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 
And I got that 100% right. And a lot of people, you know, question that at the time. They're like, no, you should go against the cues. And I'm like, no, why would I go against the cues when the cues are already devastated and the, the Dow stocks are overvalued? And here I am in this situation looking perfect because the Dow's done nothing this year. If we have any sort of dramatic volatility cycle crash later this year in the summertime, fall time, right? My SDL is going to print money in that scenario because they, they've lost some value, but they haven't. Here's the deal. If I had QQQ, um, you know, something going against the Qs, let's say, for instance, right, like SQQQ, I can tell you those options would be done at this point in time. They'd be completely worthless, completely worthless. And even if the market crashed, they wouldn't come back because the Qs have ran so much. Dow, at least I'm in the fight. And I hope those, uh, all my options expire worthless in regards to my bets against the Dow. Because obviously that means the market's going to continue to do well. But here I am in a situation that is absolutely perfect. So if this market tanks, I can tell you the Dow is going to pull down in, you know, 10, 20% if the market was to tank. And obviously my, my options, my call options against SDAO would, would absolutely print to the moon in that scenario, right? So I'm, I'm literally in the perfect scenario and I've played this as well as you could possibly play this as far as a hedge go. Like it doesn't get any better than this, man. It literally doesn't get any better than this. But the market is telling you, Wake up. They're going to be cutting sooner rather than later. If the market was concerned about them continuing to hike, this would be flipped. Okay, The Qs would be barely break even on the year and the Dow would be up 27%. Or you know, the, the Dow would be flattish and the Qs would be down huge. But the market knows that the Fed's cutting soon. And by soon, I mean this year at some point in time. Right? That's why you're getting this massive divergence. On top of that, Obviously, some of the biggest companies in the world have cut massive amounts of employees and their profitability is about to take off like a rocket ship. Think Amazon, think Meta, think a few of the other big techs out there, folks. So fascinating times we're going through. And um, yeah, man, I'm here for it. I appreciate y'all joining me as always. Continue to take advantage of deals out there. Build out your portfolios, GBD123. If you ever want to say hello to me, you enjoy the channel, send me a DM on IG, Financial Education Jeremy. I also have that as the pinned comment down there. So yeah, if you enjoy the channel, you want to ever say hi, ask me a question, something like that, feel free to send me a DM. Much love as always, and have a great day.